Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about popular and scholarly sources, both what the definitions of those are, and also looking at some examples of articles like the ones you might see in the library databases. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and open the library's website. This is lib.colostate.edu, if you're not familiar with it. And what we're going to be doing today on the website is going to a website that um, contains some examples of popular and scholarly sources so that we can look at those. Feel free to follow along on your own computer. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this tab called Research Help, which is right under the default search box. And this is just different guides for doing research in different areas. If you happen to know your major, you can look for it under Help by Subject to get some information for doing research in your major area. But the one we're going to be looking at is under Help by Course, and it's CO 150 College Composition. So go ahead and click on that. And this page has a lot of information for different aspects of doing research for CO 150. So you can check out the different areas over on the left, and also over on the right, this is me. So um, this is being updated, and so this is information about how to contact me if you have any questions about the library, um, identifying popular and scholarly sources, doing searches, accessing articles. Those are all things that I can help you with, and information about contacting me will be updated over on this page. What I'm going to click on now is the Scholarly versus Popular Sources tab. And this has a great video um, that you can check out if you have time. And also down here, these are the definitions of scholarly and popular sources. So scholarly articles, which are also called peer-reviewed or refereed articles, are articles that are written and reviewed by experts in the field. So for example, if I was a doctor studying heart disease, I might write an article about my original research and send it to a journal with a peer review process. That journal would send it to several other, you know, doctors studying heart disease or something very similar, and they'd review it for things like quality, originality, and contribution to the field. So when you see a peer reviewed journal article, you know that there was a lot of involvement from experts in the production of that article. That doesn't mean it's perfect or that every um, peer-reviewed article agrees with each other. It's, you know, just saying that there has been a lot of expertise in producing that article. In contrast, popular publications are usually published in newspapers and magazines. So if you've ever been to a grocery store and seen a big rack of newspapers and magazines, those are all popular publications. They're usually written by journalists, and if they're reviewed, they're reviewed by editors. So it's a different process for producing those articles. They're also typically written for a general audience, whereas peer-reviewed articles are usually more written for people who are doing research in the field. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these example pages. There are a bunch here if you want to look at different ones. I'm going to click on Scholarly versus Popular Climate Change and Health. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the first article to open it. And this will open the information about the article. I'm going to click on the PDF so that we can actually see the full text of the article. And this is a very typical example of what a peer-reviewed article looks like. So up here you can see I've got the journal title, which is Climatic Change. And the title of the article is Managed Retreat as a Strategy for Climate Change Adaptation in Small Communities, Public Health Implications. This is a pretty typical title for a scholarly article. Um, it's telling you exactly what it's about. These articles are usually to communicate original research or studies. So the titles are frequently going to tell you what that study looked at in pretty straightforward terms. In terms of the authors, it's pretty frequent, although not always, to see some information about their credentials. Um, like I mentioned, these articles are usually written by experts, so you might see things like their degrees or oftentimes what university they work at. A lot of people who write these articles work at universities, including CSU, so that's a common thing to see. All scholarly articles will start with an abstract, which is a short summary of what the article is about. When you're doing your searching, you're always going to want to read this abstract first 
because it's going to help you determine whether that article is going to be relevant to your research. So start by reading that abstract, use it to determine whether you want to take the time to read that full article. Going down a little bit, um, scholarly articles typically start with an introduction or literature review where they talk about other research that's been done in the field um, and sort of leads to the need to do the current study. So this is a good place to get some additional ideas for terms you might use in your search or even they'll frequently reference some articles you might want to look up. Going down, it's very frequent to see sections like methods, um, materials, and results. You won't see this in every peer-reviewed article because not every peer-reviewed article talks about an experiment, um, but it's very, very common. And also just going through this, you might see some tables, some charts, um, some maps. Um, if there are pictures, and there are pictures in some peer-reviewed articles, they'll be very relevant to what the article is talking about. So you won't see like clip art pictures. And the discussion or conclusion talks about the implications of the study. This is a really important part to read. So um, this is sometimes a place that people will sort of start with to get an idea of you know, what the article concluded, but there's some different ways to approach these. And then at the bottom, all articles will include a references list or bibliography that talks about the resources that the authors looked at in preparing their research. This is really important. Um, it's very much a part of the scholarly conversation to refer to and acknowledge other studies. And also it's a great place where you might be able to find some additional resources that you want to look up. So if you see a title that you're like, that looks like a fantastic article that would be really relevant to my research, you can search the title in the library databases and frequently you'll be able to find it immediately. If that's something you ever have trouble with, it's something I can help you with. So those are the basic parts of a scholarly article. Now let's go ahead and look at a popular article for contrast. So probably these will be a little bit more familiar. This is an article from a magazine. It starts with a big glossy picture. It's also, the text is talking more specifically about the city of Phoenix. It's frequent for popular articles to be more locally focused or more, more focused on current events. So that's frequently something that's different about the content. And just scrolling through this, another big glossy picture, we're seeing the author name but not really much information about them. Popular articles tend to be shorter. They tend to be a lot less formal. They tend to have more pictures. You might see some ads. There's a little bit of information about the author, but not a whole lot. So this is a typical example of what a popular article looks like. I'm going to pull up one more just so I can show you something else you might see in the databases, which is um, when the article is only available in HTML full text, which is what we call it when it doesn't have all that formatting or um, pictures, but it does have the full text of the article. So this is a complete article from the newspaper USA Today. It's just formatted a little bit differently. So this is another way that um, you might see popular articles in our databases. So that's a basic overview of the differences between popular and scholarly articles. As I mentioned, there are some more examples on that website if you want to scroll through and see some other examples. This is my contact information. I'm the composition librarian. So if you have any questions about this or if you need any help, I'm happy to help you. Um, and yeah, feel free to contact me with questions and thanks for watching. Thank you.